to From the Bench. Today I've got with me Charlie Sleeve, uh, all the way from London, of Big Bear Audio. Um, so Charlie came to work with us on a new product. Uh, it's a tube mic preamp, and uh, I'm not really a tube designer. It's not really my wheelhouse, but Charlie very much is. So I was really excited to, for him to come here and work on this with us. So. Um, Charlie, really briefly, what's your background? What do you? How'd you get into tubes and stuff? Um, I've always been fascinated by valves, not v tubes. Valves, okay. <laughs> um, and I've been working with them for about ten years. Um, I started with a company called Thermionic Culture in mm -hmm. London, um, and then I started my own company called Big Bear Audio, and that's how we got connected. I made a preamp called the MP1, which had a color slot. Right. Um, and I think it was time for us to work together on. Uh, a valve preamp for 500 series. Yeah. So tell us about this valve preamp. Uh, I'm going to put it up here so people can see better. So um, my design philosophy is very much using the best components you can find and using um, high quality circuitry. Uh, so we've picked Lundell transformers. So there's a, a Lundell step up transformer, um, a valve gain stage. And we wanted to make this product a bit unique. So we've got a discrete output, discrete. Uh, op amp output stage driving the output London. Cool, and yeah, we've also got a DI here. Um, got a line input switch. Yeah, so there's a few I different features. Filter. We've got the DI input. We've got we'll have uh, input gain and output trim, um, and two selectable input impedances. Gotcha. And then also, I just want to point out, we don't have to get to it right now, but this stuff here is a high voltage um, power supply. So we've actually right. had to bake in our own kind yes, of power yeah. handling for the tube. Um, well, let's start with the tube. Um, kind of walk me through how do you do an amplifier with just one tube and why this tube? Yeah, so the 500 series throws a couple of issues at us. So one mm -hmm. is space and the other is um, power consumption. Um, so we need a valve with the most amount of gain for the least amount of current. So we've picked the 12AX7 and we're using it in a topology called grid leak bias. This means that the uh, the cathode is grounded okay. and then there's a large resistance between the grid and the cathode. This means that um, as the valve heats up and electrons start flowing, some electrons get trapped on the grid and this then in turn creates the negative bias, negative voltage bias that we need to for if it was a standard um, valve stage. Um, because of that, we need a very high voltage, which we'll come to, um, but this really is ideal for small signals um, and at low current consumption. Right. Um, and it also means that um, the way we treat the input of it, there's gonna be some really nice overload characteristics when you do drive it too hard. So it's gonna be perfect for mic signals, but if you drive it harder, you're going to get that really nice uh, valve overload. Yeah. So, yeah. So this the design philosophy is is not for it to be the dirtiest. No. Well, well, we don't want that, and that's why we, that's another reason why we picked the Lundells because we want the best microphone preamplifier we can mm -hmm. design. Um, but we we also want to have fun with it as well. So if it does overload, we want it to have that nice valve distortion. Um, and we're also offering the discrete output stage so people can uh, pick and choose. Right. And is the... So if you are trying to design the best sounding mic preamp and it's not just for distortion, mm -hmm. why a tube? I think a lot of people have a, an idea that tubes are just kind of little distortion boxes. Um, I think that the sound of any device, especially amplification, um, the sound of it is dominated by the very first amplification stage. Hmm. And I think that um, valve designs with you know, almost no feedback, uh, using good components, keeping the circuitry as simple as possible, you really can't beat it. Hmm. Is that just headroom? They just kind of handle signals great, gracefully or like? They, both of that, yeah, hmm. certainly. Uh, let's get to this. So, you know, the, the 500 series power is plus minus 16 volts. Mm -hmm. Tubes need in the hundreds 
of volts? Yeah, in this case it needs 300 volts. Okay, so uh, how are we doing that? So um, we are using a switch mode power supply with its own error regulator mm -hmm. um, to go from, this, well actually we're going from 16 down to 12 for the heaters. Okay. Uh, and then we're going back up again to 300. Mm -hmm. um, and there's really no compromise with this. We can't, we can't design a valve preamp uh, with what's called starve plates. Um, yeah, okay. You've, oh, said, sorry, the, you've said the word. No, yeah. no, 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 you've said the, the controversial word. So, like, I see starved plate online when people are mm -hmm. talking about, like, cheap two preamps. Yes, and it's all true, sadly. Uh, <laughs> you can look, you can make a circuit with a, with a valve using starved plate, so just using, like, plus or minus 16, or even just zero to 16. So starved plate just meaning the plate wants a certain voltage, you give it less. Yeah, you're operating the valve in an area that is just not been designed to operate. Gotcha. It doesn't mean that it won't work. So you can you can make a valve operate in that area, but you you make sacrifices. So you make sacrifices of headroom, and you you certainly can't use it for a gain stage hmm. and uh, for a mic gain stage. Mm -hmm. The input impedance is going to be so low that you'd have to drive it with a low source impedance right. amplifier. So like an op amp. Mm -hmm. Um, which means you're sacrificing noise down the chain, so you'd have to have a mic pre with solid state devices and then and then your valve stage. So what you're doing is is essentially adding a gimmicky valve distortion to a op amp right. uh, mic pre. So gotcha. look, yeah, starve plate, you can get it to work, but generally if it is starve plate, it's, it's just a gimmick to make some valve distortion. And especially if it's the main amplifier Correct, in a yeah. mic preamp, yeah. it would just... We wouldn't do it. It'd be non starter yeah. Gotcha. Um, cool. Interesting. Um, anything else about the, the circuit? I mean, what is the... Why the Lundahls? So I've had a relationship with Pear Lundahl for a while, and the reason of that is because I think they're just the best transformers out there. We want, to, we want the music to sing through right. our circuitry. Um, we don't... If we want to add color, we can use color right. modules. Right. Um, if we want to drive it hard, they're gonna they're gonna sing. Um, yeah. So for me, they're they're the most musical and they're the cleanest. Right. And that's why we picked this Jensen nine one eight uh yeah. DOA as well. It's very it's not meant to be colourful. Yeah, so it's gonna be a really really good valve preamp, um, and which you can play with as well. Right. So oh yeah, we've also got an output attenuator after the tube. Yeah, so you can you can drive it harder. You can you drive the yeah, tube. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, I'm I'm excited. I'm not quite sure. You know, the next question in the comments are going to be when does this come out? Yeah. How <laughs> does it cost? Uh, who knows? But we've got a working prototype here, and uh, Charlie actually has an engineering degree, so he does these things a lot faster than I do. So. Um, in theory, yeah. In theory, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, stay tuned for two preamp.